going back to some very important point that Mr. Foucault made, one does not necessarily allow the state to define what is legal. Now, the state has the power to enforce a certain concept of what is legal, but power doesn't imply justice or correctness even. So the state may define something as civil disobedience and may be wrong in doing so. For example, in the United States, the state defines it as civil disobedience to, let's say, derail an ammunition train that's going to Vietnam. And the state is wrong in defining that as civil disobedience because it's legal and proper and should be done. It's proper to carry out actions that will prevent the criminal acts of the state, just as it's proper to violate a traffic ordinance in order to prevent a murder. If I was standing at a street corner and the traffic light were red, let's say I was standing in my car and I drove across the traffic light to prevent somebody from, let's say, machine gunning a group of people, of course that's not violation of law. It's an appropriate and proper action. No sane judge would convict you for such an action. Similarly, a good deal of what the state authorities define as civil disobedience is not really civil disobedience. In fact, it's legal, in fact, obligatory behavior in violation of the commands of the state, which may or may not be legal commands. So one has to be rather careful about, the, about calling things illegal, I think. Oui, mais alors là, je voudrais vous poser une question. Quand vous, quand aux États-Unis, lorsque vous faites une action franchement illégale, which I regard as illegal, not just the state. No, the, the, uh, when the, the, the state, uh, an the action state that the illegal. state considers as illegal. Yeah. Est-ce que vous faites cette action parce que vous la trouvez juste yeah. en vertu mm. d'une justice yeah. idéale, ou bien est-ce que vous la faites parce que yeah. la guerre de classe yes. la rend utile et nécessaire? Yeah. Well, est-ce que vous vous référez à une justice idéale? Again, voilà le problème. Very often, when I do something which the state regards as illegal, I regard it as legal. Yes, that's because it. I regard the state as criminal. I don't but in some instances, that's not true. That is, l let me be quite concrete about it uh, and move from the area of class war to imperialist war, where the situation is somewhat clearer and easier. Take international law, a very weak instrument as we know, but nevertheless it incorporates some rather interesting principles. Well, international law in many respects is the instrument of the powerful. That is, international law permits much too wide a range of, inter of international forceful intervention in support of existing power structures that define themselves as states and against the interests of masses of people who happen to be organized in opposition to states. But, in fact, international law is not solely of that kind. And in fact, there are interesting elements of international law, let's say embedded in the United Nations Charter, which permit, in fact, I believe, require the citizen to act against his own state in ways that the state will falsely regard as criminal. But nevertheless, he's acting legally because international law also happens to, pro to prohibit the threat or use of force in international affairs, except under some very narrow circumstances of which, for example, the war in Vietnam is not one which means that in the particular case of, let's say, the Vietnam War, the one that interests me most, the American state is acting in a criminal capacity, and people have the right to stop criminals from, from murdering people. Uh, just because the criminal happens to call, you a, to call your action illegal when you try to stop him, that doesn't mean it is illegal. I mean, a perfectly clear case of that is the present case of the Pentagon Papers in the United States, which I suppose you know about. Reduced to its essentials and forgetting legalisms, what is happening is that the state is trying to prosecute people for exposing its crimes. That's what it amounts to. C'est donc au nom d'une justice plus pure que vous critiquez le fonctionnement de la justice. Parce que c'est pour moi, si vous voulez, important de savoir ça, parce que nous avons actuellement en France un débat sur le problème de la justice et à propos de l'institution d'un tribunal populaire à propos de la justice. Vous connaissez le problème. Des... Et un certain nombre de gens, euh, comme Sartre par exemple, pensent que pour faire actuellement la critique du système pénal en France ou pour faire la critique de la euh, des pratiques policières, de la manière dont la police se conduit, il faut faire une sorte de tribunal 
qui, au nom d'une justice idéale, d'une justice supérieure, d'une justice humaine en général, condamnera la pratique des juges français ou des policiers français. Et puis, il y a un autre groupe de gens, et je me sens... Enfin, je, je travaille avec ces gens-là, qui disent « Non, il ne faut pas faire cela parce que quand vous vous référez à la justice idéale que le tribunal serait censé appliquer, vous vous référez en fait à un certain nombre d'idées de justice qui ont été formées à notre époque par un certain groupe d'individus euh, qui sont eux-mêmes, malgré tout, d'une façon directe ou indirecte, les produits de la société dans laquelle nous nous trouvons. Il faut attaquer les pratiques de la justice, il faut attaquer la police, il faut attaquer les pratiques policières, mais en termes de guerre et non pas en termes de justice. But you see, surely you believe that your role in the war is a just role, that you're fighting a just war to bring in a concept from another domain. And that, I think, has to, is, is important. If you thought that you were fighting an unjust war, you couldn't follow that line of reasoning. And the only, see, I would like to slightly reformulate what you said. It doesn't seem to me that the differences between legality and ideal justice, it's rather between legality and better justice. Now, this better system may have its defects, certainly will. But comparing the better system with the existing system Uh, and not being confused into thinking that our better system is the ideal system, we can then argue, I think, as follows, that the concept of legality and the concept of justice are not identical. They're not entirely distinct either. Uh, insofar as legality incorporates justice in this notion, in this sense of better justice, referring to a better society, then, we're ju then we should follow and obey the law and force the state to obey the law and force the great corporations to obey the law and force the police to obey the law if we have the power to do so of is course it, no, it, if, it, but no in the, just f f finally if in those areas where the legal system happens to represent not better justice but rather the techniques of oppression that have been codified in a particular autocratic system well then a reasonable human being should disregard and oppose them, at least in principle. He may not, for some reason, do it in fact. Alors, je voulais simplement répondre à votre toute première phrase quand vous avez dit « Mais euh, la guerre que vous faites contre la police, si vous ne considériez pas qu'elle est juste, vous ne la feriez pas. » Alors, je vous répondrai un peu en termes de Spinoza. Je vous dirai « Le prolétariat ne fait pas la guerre à la classe dirigeante parce qu'il considère que cette guerre est juste, le prolétariat fait la guerre à la classe dirigeante parce qu'il veut, pour la première fois dans l'histoire, prendre le pouvoir. Et c'est parce qu'il veut prendre le pouvoir qu'il considère que sa guerre est juste. Yeah, I don't agree On fait la guerre pour gagner et pas parce qu'elle est juste. Je ne pense pas personnellement avec ça. Par exemple, si je pouvais convaincre que l'attainment de pouvoir par le prolétariat conduirait à un état police terroriste, in which uh, freedom and uh, dignity and decent human relations would be destroyed, then I wouldn't want the proletariat to take power. In fact, the only reason for wanting any such thing, I believe, is because one thinks, rightly or wrongly, that some fundamental human values will be achieved by that transfer of power. Alors, je vous répondrai ceci. Quand le prolétariat prendra le pouvoir, il se peut bien que le prolétariat euh, exerce à l'égard des classes dont il vient de triompher, il exerce un pouvoir violent, dictatorial et même sanglant. Je ne vois pas quelle objection on peut faire à cela. Maintenant, vous me direz, vous me direz, et si le prolétariat exerce ce pouvoir sanglant, tyrannique et injuste à l'égard de lui-même, le prolétariat. Alors je vous répondrai, ça ne peut se produire mm. que si le prolétariat n'a pas réellement pris le pouvoir, mais c'est que une classe extérieure au prolétariat ou un groupe de gens intérieurs au prolétariat, une bureaucratie ou les restes de la petite bourgeoisie, etc., s'est emparé du pouvoir.
Well, I'm not at all satisfied with that theory of revolution for a lot of reasons, historical and other. But even if one were to accept it for the sake of argument, still that theory uh, is holding that, is maintaining that it is proper for the proletariat to take power and exercise it in a violent and bloody and unjust fashion because it is claimed, in my opinion falsely, that that will be, that that will lead to a more just society in which the state will wither away, in which the proletariat will be a universal class, and so on and so forth. If it weren't for that further justification, the concept, the concept of a dictatorship of the proletariat, violent and bloody, would certainly be unjust. At least I, I for example, am not a committed pacifist. That is, I, don't, I would not hold that it is under all imaginable circumstances wrong to use violence even though use of violence is in some sense unjust. I believe that one has to estimate relative injustices. But the use of violence and the creation of some degree of injustice can only itself be justified on the basis of the claim and the assessment, which always ought to be undertaken very, very seriously and with a good deal of skepticism, that this violence is being exercised because a more just result is going to be achieved. Uh, if it does not have that grounding, it really is totally immoral, in my opinion. Je ne, suis pas, je, je ne pense pas que l'idéal de la guerre de classe, enfin le but que se propose le prolétariat en menant la guerre de classe, je ne crois pas qu'on puisse dire, enfin qu'il soit suffisant de dire que c'est une plus grande justice. Ce que le prolétariat veut faire en chassant la classe actuellement au pouvoir et en prenant pour lui le pouvoir, c'est la suppression, précisément, d'un pouvoir de classe en général. Okay. Car But le prolétariat... That's the further justification. Hein? That is the further justification. Ça, ça c'est la the... justification, oh, mais yeah, pas, pas en termes de justice, en oh, termes de pouvoir. But it is pouvoir. in terms of justice. It's because the end that will be achieved, it is claimed, is a just end. If the... No, you know, Leninist or whatever you like would dare to say we have a right to take power, let's say we the proletariat, uh, and then throw everyone else into crematoria, let's say. I mean, if that were the consequence of the proletariat taking power, of course it would not be appropriate. The idea is, and the, as for reasons I mentioned, I'm skeptical about it, that uh, a period of violent dictatorship, of perhaps violent and bloody dictatorship, is justified because that will mean the submergence and termination of class of class oppression, mm -hmm. a, a, a proper end to achieve in human life. Mais il me semble que de toute façon, la notion même de justice fonctionne à l'intérieur de la société de classe comme revendication du côté de la classe opprimée et comme justification du côté de la classe oppressive. I don't agree with that. Et euh, euh, dans, une, dans une société sans classe, mm -hmm. je ne suis pas sûr qu'on est encore à utiliser cette notion de justice. Yeah. I, well, here I really disagree. I think that uh, there is a sort of an absolute basis. Uh, if you press me too hard, I'll be in trouble because I can't sketch it out. But some sort of an absolute basis ultimately residing in fundamental human qualities in terms of which a real notion of justice is grounded. And I think that our existing systems of justice I think it's too hasty to characterize our existing systems of justice as merely systems of class oppression. I don't think that they are that. I think that, they're, that they embody systems of class oppression, and they embody elements of other kinds of oppression. But they also embody a kind of a groping towards the uh, true human, humanly valuable concept of justice and decency and love and kindness and sympathy and so on, which I think are real. Je dirais simplement ceci. Je ne peux pas m'empêcher, contrairement à ce que vous pensez, je ne peux pas m'empêcher de croire que cette notion de nature humaine, cette notion de bonté, de justice, d'essence humaine, de réalisation de l'essence humaine, tout ça, ce sont des notions et des concepts qui ont été formés à l'intérieur de notre civilisation, dans notre type de savoir dans notre forme de philosophie et que par conséquent ça fait partie même de notre système de classe et qu'on ne peut pas 
aussi regrettable que ce soit, on ne peut pas faire valoir ces notions pour décrire ou justifier un combat qui devrait, qui doit en principe bouleverser les fondements mêmes de notre société. Il y a là une extrapolation dont je n'arrive pas à trouver la justification historique.